What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Hello and welcome to a virtual PD on YouTube and education. My name is Tyler Tarver, educator. I've uh, been an educator ever since I got out of college and I've been doing it my whole life. I love it and I love helping teachers and students grow and have fun with education. I think YouTube is a wonderful tool for people to use, even if they're not gonna create for YouTube, but if they're gonna use it in their classroom or for their learning. So today, let's get started and talk about YouTube for education. If you would, start us off if you're watching live, go in the comments or if you're watching this later, in the comments, tell me, where are you coming from? What do you teach? And or, what subject are you taking right now? What grade are you in? If you're a student or teacher or doing anything, I'd love to hear where you're coming from. Hit me up in the comments. HMU, that means hit me up. Okay, let's get started. So if you wanna join along, we've got links in the description to some of the resources, including the presentation that you're looking at right now. Which way is it? It'd be on this side, right here. Okay, so check that out. If you wanna join, it's at bit.ly, that's a bit.ly, bit.ly slash YouTube for life, number four, life, all lowercase. So go there, you can follow along on the presentation. There are links inside the presentation that give you resources and ideas. You can screenshot, you can do whatever you want to help grow in your classroom using the tools and the ideas that we're gonna throw at you today. So, here we go. Well, if I remember how slideshows work, there it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's first start off with this. Um, I'm gonna kinda hit you with my experience on here, and it's not to say that everything I've done on YouTube is success. It's not, I promise you that, okay? However, I have been on YouTube for a, well over a decade doing educational videos. I was one of the first um, teachers out there throwing videos on there to help their students. And I did it because it was just convenient, which we'll talk about in a second. But over time, I have two channels, and those two channels have amassed over 60, almost 70,000 subscribers across the two channels and over 15 million views. So I'm not, I'm not bragging because there are tons of YouTubers that have way more than me, but I'm just saying it to say, whatever mistakes you're gonna make, I've made them. So hopefully through this tutorial, I can give you a head start on a way to um, be successful, whether you're making videos or you're just presenting videos to your classes. So before we get started, I'm not gonna go through and show you every single tutorial on how to use YouTube, how to make a playlist, how to start a YouTube. I'll talk about some of it, briefly, but if you think I'm talking too fast, well, one, you can just rewind and watch it again, or you can watch it in half speed, that'd be weird. Um, but also I've got a ton of YouTube resources on like actual tutorials that I've made, along with a ton of other Google resources I'm gonna show you. So I've got like a spreadsheet, it's uh, bit.ly slash gtarver, and it's also linked in the description, but it's got essentially how to do anything with Google. And I've got one on, there's a section on YouTube. So if you skip down to that, Right there, boom, intro to YouTube. It's like a whole lesson plan that I created that you could give your students, you could go through, or you can give your students to go through. It's tailored to just literally, you can copy paste. Uh, YouTube channels, how to create a channel, what they are, YouTube playlists, all these tools that could help you with YouTube in the future. So there you go. There are the tutorials. Also, if you prefer websites, I've got them on my website at tarveracademy.com slash Google. And so there's a ton of resources for people to use for Google and YouTube and all of the above. Okay, sweet. So now that we got that out of the way, so you're not like, hey, you didn't show me how to do it. It's in here, okay? So you've got the tutorials. Now, let's get on to YouTube for education. So, YouTube quick facts. One thing I think is important to know is some information about YouTube as a platform. YouTube is a social media platform. It is a, it's unique in that it is social media like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. You can communicate, you have community. There are people that, um, that connect over that and find community there, just like social media. However, it is also a search tool. Fun fact, what is the number one largest search engine in the entire world? It's Google. Number two is YouTube. Sorry, Bing, you didn't make the cut. It's YouTube. People search YouTube and guess who owns both of them? Google does. Google owns Google and YouTube, so they own the top two search engines in the world. If people wanna know something or learn something or expand you know, their knowledge, they're gonna Google it or they're gonna YouTube it, okay? And honestly, when you Google it, you're doing both because Google wants to push YouTube to the top of the search because they wanna promote their platform and they know 
You know, you don't really get a, like, oh, I'm, I've been on just Googling things for hours. No, but you'll look up and it's been three hours. You've just gone through like this wormhole of YouTube videos. So they know that grabs you and keeps you on their site longer than just Googling something. So it's something they're pushing that's important to them. Okay, so some fun, quick facts about YouTube. Every single minute, over 300 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube. The amount of content on YouTube, the amount of resources that are there is it's almost incomprehensible because it's it's nonstop from so many sources, valid sources, um, non-valid sources, people like students making it, teachers making it, everybody that wants to produce content can produce it and put it on YouTube for free. So it is becoming this library of resources, not only like, oh, I can have community there, I can enjoy this as entertainment, but it's also education. Um, and so I think the struggle for a lot of teachers is not oh wow, like what am I going to use in my classroom? It's finding those good resources. It's navigating this huge library, this massive library of resources. How do I navigate that and help my students? Um, so that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. It has over 1.3 billion users. That's a third of the internet. A third of the internet. It's insane. Top creators earn upwards of 20 million plus dollars a year. Y'all ever heard of a uh, Ryan's toy review. You heard of Ryan? Yeah, Ryan is like seven and made over 25 million just on YouTube ads last year. That's not including his toy partnership with Walmart. It's not including his, um, you know, his Nickelodeon. They'll put his vlogs on Nickelodeon and play it as a show. Any of the brand deals where they, hey, we'll send you a toy for five million dollars or a million dollars or whatever, and you just play with it on your show. I'll tell you this. A lot of you guys are rolling your eyes on the fact that all these YouTube creators make so much money, but I'll be honest with you, they are underpaid for what they are bringing to companies that partner with them. And here's why, is because YouTube, they have attention. People that watch, when my kids watch Ryan play with a toy, they want that toy because it looks fun and their friend Ryan, who they watch every day, who they feel like they're friends with, they're gonna want to play with the same toy. They trust Ryan whenever, um, Whenever my, my son, he we started a gaming channel, Tarver Gaming, that's what's up. It's my son's channel and we film us just playing video games. When we first started making it, he would like look at the camera and he'd go, hey Ryan, if you're watching this, please like the video. Like he thought that Ryan, who has, you know, tens of millions of subscribers, was just gonna watch our video, which Ryan, if you're watching, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. But also, uh, it's, it's a mindset that these young people have and that they feel connected to people online, which again, we're gonna talk about that later when we talk about community. Now, one thing, if, before we get going, if you could, please, we're gonna practice the thumbs up, hit the like button on this video if you're watching this. If you have ever seen a YouTube video that you like, hit like on this video to make up for not liking the video that you actually liked. Plus, it's, it's nice because you know, you're know you watching this for free, so I appreciate it. Hit like, hit subscribe, that's cool. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry, got distracted. Um, over half of YouTube's views are on mobile. That's It's way over that. That's even educational videos. So my educational math or Google tutorials or whatever I'm teaching on there, you would think like, oh, students are only gonna watch a math video on a computer because they're doing homework that they're supposed to do. No, they will watch it on whatever device they have because if I'm typing my paper on my computer, I'll just watch it on my phone or my tablet or something else. Mobile is 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 the platform for the future, okay? It is, like I know desktops are prevalent right now, but devices, that's where we're gonna go in the future. So if you're making content, keep in mind the mobile friendliness of whatever you're making. Um, it reaches more 18 to 49 year olds than any cable news network. That's insane. And you was talking earlier about the amount of money that marketers aren't putting into advertising on YouTube or putting into partnering with YouTubers. Commercials, TV commercials is an $80 billion a year industry. When was the last time you watched a TV commercial? I'll answer that for you. It was on the Super Bowl. And you know what the last time before that was? The previous Super Bowl. Because we do not go in and just want to watch commercials. It's a nuisance to us. And they're putting all this money into something that people are going um, out to get to the fridge or they're going to the restroom or whatever during those times. But you know what we're actually doing during those times? Most of the time now, we're pulling out our phone. If you're watching something on your TV and you're watching it on Hulu and an ad pops up, what do you do? You grab your phone, you check your text, you're looking on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You might be watching YouTube while you're waiting on another video to come on. 
they know the attention is on the phone. So these creators for the phone, when a, when a kid in your class or your kids are like, I want to be a YouTuber or an Instagrammer, don't scoff at them. That is one of the most sought after jobs right now. And not just because it's awesome to travel the world, get paid for it or play video games, get paid for it, but because it is profitable and it is a long lasting thing that those young people can turn into essentially any career they want. So if I'm a video game creator and I've got this following, after five years, I might get sick of doing video games. You know what? I'm just going to do a daily vlog where I just hang out with my family and I film it. A lot of that audience will stick with it because they feel like they're connected to those people. So know that if, if a student or somebody's like, I want to lean into YouTube or you want to lean into YouTube, that is that's not something to laugh at. It is important and you can provide people value and you can also make a living off of it possibly. So, and it's all thanks to Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. I don't know the specifics on this, but apparently there was something that happened on national television involving these two. I don't know what it was. I, I don't even know. But back then in 2000, was that 2004? The very beginning of 2004, one of the people that worked at PayPal, the, the online money people, he missed what happened at halftime. Well, everybody was talking about it, but nobody's like showing what happened. He's like, I want to know what happened. I want to see it. Everybody's talking about it. I can't even see what's happening. He's like, there should be an online platform where you can go and people can upload current things that are happening. So he helped create YouTube. And then like within a year, um, Google bought YouTube and it, it, it became what it is today. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple features and a couple things that <clears throat> over the years of doing this presentation at conferences and at schools, it's questions I've gotten. And again, it's going to sound like I'm promoting like, hey, you should sign up for this or do this. I'm not. You do whatever you want to do. Okay, you do you, boo-boo. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to tell you about it so that you understand the difference because a lot of people get confused because it's a similar branding. Okay? So let's start here. YouTube Premium. You have probably heard of this. This is something that YouTube will push on theirs. Like, don't want to see ads? Sign up for YouTube Premium. Try one month for free or three months free or whatever it is. YouTube Premium is essentially the, um, I mean, the, the premium version of YouTube where you pay around 10 bucks a month to not have to see an ad on any video. None. At all. And you think to yourself, oh, that's great, but that's not worth 10 bucks. Well, that's not all you get for that. YouTube Premium, for about $10 a month, you get no ads on any video, which is convenient if you're playing a video for your class in the classroom and it comes up and there's some you know inappropriate commercial or whatever that starts playing. You're like, ah, oh, cover your eyes. This one, you would have no ad starts playing. It's not even an ad on the side, okay? Also, you get Google Play is what it used to be. Now it's YouTube Music. So you get free like streaming music where you can pick any song that's on YouTube. Fun fact, think of all the streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, um, what else is there? Pandora, YouTube. 49% of the online music market is YouTube. So as big as Spotify is, YouTube has half of the entire market. So when you think of YouTube Music, you know they might be an up-and-comer as far as developing that, that app, but just know they have the largest amount of attention, a largest amount of library. So if I'm going to put my money anywhere, I'm putting it towards YouTube Music. Also, with that premium, you get, um, you get originals. So it's like YouTube's version of Netflix, like Justin Bieber did a documentary on it. Um, do y'all remember The Karate Kid, the movie from the 80s? Well, they did a spin-off TV show on YouTube Premium. It's a YouTube original. And it's, it's called Cobra Kai, and it was pretty popular. They've done two or three seasons now. I saw the first season. It was, it was really good. I read most of the first season. I liked it. Not enough to, I guess, finish it, but I liked it, okay? So that's what YouTube Premium. You can also store videos offline. So if you're going to get on a flight or say you're about to travel across the country and you don't want your kids to use all your data, on your iPad, while you have Wi-Fi, you can download a bunch of videos and save them from YouTube in the YouTube app on there and then when they go on the road you have no Wi-Fi and you don't want to use your data they can just use the downloaded videos. Um, if you get on a flight I'll used to do download a bunch of old Vine videos and watch them because it distracts me. And then also you can play audio in the background. So for instance a lot of times when you're on YouTube and you start playing a video um, and then you switch out of YouTube you lose it. So it's like here I start playing here. You can hear that video I started playing. To prove you're the goat this is your chance. See, it still yeah, plays. Yeah. I can go open up my texts. I, mean, I can open up anything right? that I want. We Instagram. Now I gotta, in that audio is loud. So I can keep playing the audio. It's a good way for you to listen. Like a lot of times I'll roll to a news station and start listening and it'll just like scroll into other stuff off of it. And that's my audio. It's like I use YouTube for my podcast, which that's why like Joe Rogan, um, Mark Maron, all these dudes, they'll put 
their podcast on YouTube as well because people are using it just to listen, not to watch and listen. And you get all this for the same price as what you're paying for Spotify, and Spotify is essentially the equivalent of you know, YouTube music. So just a thought, save yourself some money. I don't get any money off of that. If I do, cool, mail it to me, I don't care, cash at me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't give me any of your money. Use it to make solid purchases. Okay, YouTube TV. This is different than YouTube Premium. You have YouTube, you have YouTube Premium, which is like the step up from YouTube, and then you have YouTube TV, which is YouTube's attempt to go and take that cable news market, the cable TV market. Um, they are partnering with like a ton, almost pretty much almost every channel, and then for 50, I think it's $55 a month, you get to use YouTube TV app on your phone, your tablet, your TV, wherever you want, and you can add five family members to it, and they can have their own pro profile, they can d DVR, I still call it DVR, they can save, you know, DVR save, any show they want, any movie they want that's playing on any channel. So I can go into my YouTube TV app and I can search The Walking Dead. And I say, yeah, I like this. I hit the plus sign. What it's going to do is anytime The Walking Dead comes on on any channel, it's going to save it for me at any point in time, as long as I like that still. It'll save it and store and organize it by season and episode across. So some of them might be from FX, some might be from AMC. Whatever channel it's playing on, it'll organize it for me into that. And then I can like skip through the ads by just like double tapping on the screen and it'll skip through the commercials because like I said, ain't nobody watching the commercials. So that's, uh, that's one of the features of YouTube TV that you can use, okay? And then you can share with five family members and they can have their own that you can't see what they're DVRing. It's not like cluttering yours up and there is no limit to the DVR amount on there. So you could literally just save, I mean, what 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 is like 100 gigs or essentially a full Netflix. Like you can create your own Netflix of all the shows you ever want to watch or do watch, movies, sports, all of it. You can do it and yes, you can watch live events. And you notice one of the things with YouTube is whenever you go to YouTube, their algorithm pushes stuff that you like in front of your face even if you're not subscribed to it. YouTube TV does the same thing. So if I go in and watch a bunch of like old war movies, then guess what it's going to do? It's going to tailor my experience when I first sign on to, you know, accommodate what they think I like, which might be war movies. Um, and here's the thing too, they pull it across all of your, like if you go to regular YouTube and watch a bunch of stuff, they'll start pushing stuff on the YouTube TV app that is related to what you watched there because they know that you like it. So it's like, they're learning you and trying to adapt your experience around what they know you like based on watch time, likes, comments, engagement, all of it. So it's great because it's doing all the work for you and finding stuff that you like. Some people are like, I don't want anybody to know about myself. That's for me to know and for them to find out. That's fine and don't ever get on the internet because guess what, you're getting tracked everywhere you go. So I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so if you don't have these two apps, you need to download them right now on your phone. First one is YouTube which I've got circled and clipped on there. And then the other one is YouTube Music. Even if you don't sign up for premium, you can still use YouTube Music and it's gonna tailor your experience around what you actually watch and like on YouTube. So it's still gonna tailor it around you and your personal you know, likes and dislikes. So use it, it's almost like Pandora, like you don't get all the features you get if you're on premium, but it's still a great app to have for music. Okay, cool. Now let's get into, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Here we go, we are in uh, the talks about YouTube. And by the way, I wore my, don't forget to like, subscribe. So if you haven't, tell me this in the comments. What is your favorite YouTube channel, educational or not, that you watch? Tell me right now in the comments. I'd love to hear. And I'm in the comments with you and I'm talking. Um, tell me what you like, okay? As you're doing that, I'm going to explain to you the two, essentially the way every website on the internet does content. Either they create good content, they create content, not always good, but they create content or they curate content, which means they gather or they have a place where people can put all the stuff. So for instance, if I am, you know, if I'm a news station, I'm creating content all the time. Netflix, you know how they make their own stuff. They curate content from different, you know, TV shows and networks and all these old shows and movies, but also they create their own, they create. So they're a combination of the two. A lot of people will just create their own stuff. If I have a blog and I'm writing, I'm creating for my blog every day or every week or whenever it is, that's me creating for it. Now, curating, that is what YouTube does. Because when was the last time you went to YouTube to watch a video by YouTube? 
You don't do it. You go to YouTube to watch videos by so-and-so or by your aunt or by your teacher or your students or whatever it is. You're going there because YouTube curates that. Facebook. You don't go to Facebook to watch Mark Zuckerberg's videos. You go to Facebook to watch videos from your cousin or your friend or a person you went to high school with. It curates the content for you. So, what I like to break that down as far as YouTube goes is you can have a YouTube channel. It's free. You can start a YouTube channel and you can create content for your channel. Or your channel can be incredible and you never make one video for it. All you do is curate content from across YouTube and bring that in as resources for your students, your teachers, your staff, parents, whoever. You can curate and find good stuff. So you ever heard people like, I, I can't make that, but I know what looks good. I know, you know what is a good resource or a valid resource. Cool. You can be very valuable to people across YouTube by just organizing what you know and what you see as a good, valid resource. So there you go. So if you're like, I'm never going to make a YouTube video, that's fine. That's okay. I'm actually going to address what you can do right out front. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to start with this. <clears throat> Why did I start making YouTube videos? I told you guys I have thousands of YouTube videos out there. I've got a couple channels. Um, well, three, I guess, including Tarver Gaming. So I've got three channels out there. And why did I start making educational YouTube videos? And the reason is, is because I did it out of necessity to help my students. Um, when I first started teaching, I was teaching high school math, and I had one class period that was at our ALE, our Alternative Learning Education, um, Alternative Learning Environment. And I would go there and teach. Well, the problem with teaching there, just like one class period a day, is I had students, I had like 20 or so students in there, and I have students that are on all different levels. So I've got some students that are taking Algebra 1, some in Algebra 2, Algebra Connections, Algebra A, Algebra B, Geometry, occasionally a Trig Pre-Cal. You get these students that are all taking these different subjects, and you're supposed to teach those within the same class period. And this is like 2008, I guess. And I'm sitting here thinking, how am I supposed to teach all of these things at the same time? So what I did was I started recording myself teaching geometry, which I was teaching in the regular classroom, and I would record those videos, and then I would take those a chapter at a time, and I would upload them to these iPods that the school had bought. Do you remember the, the iPod, the video iPods with the scrolly wheel, like scrolly wheel iPods? You gotta remember. If you remember those, if you had one of those, tell me in the comments, say, yo, I had it. I had one of those. I had a scrolly wheel iPod. Rest in peace. I don't think, do they even make those anymore? Let me know that in the comments. If not, we need to go buy one on eBay. It'd be worth money someday. So I would upload a chapter at a time because there wasn't enough room for all the chapters of geometry and I'd upload them there. And so students in geometry, they would work out of the book. And so I'm teaching to that exact book. So that's good because if I just went and found a video, it's not going to really relate to exactly to the book we're using. So I teach out of the book and the students would watch the video with their headphones in off the little scrolly iPod, and then they would work, and then I would be more of a facilitator. They would ask questions and say, Mr. Tarver, how do I do this? Or I got stuck here, or I didn't do this. You know, explain this to me. And I would help them, you know, whenever they needed it. And then the first half of class, I would teach Algebra 1 in person. In the second half of class, I teach Algebra 2. So it's like I would flip when I would teach. So that way I could teach three subjects adequately at one time. Well, um, here's, here's an example of one of them that I made. I filmed this on my prep period. It's slope intercept formula. I don't know if you guys remember this little chicken nugget. I don't know if you remember it, but do you remember that that uh, that formula, slope intercept formula? Does anybody Did anybody know it before you saw it right here? Tell me in the comments if you did or didn't. Don't lie. We're watching. I'm kidding. But here's me teaching slope intercept formula with these awesome iMovie graphics. This video I filmed, I think in the summer, I was like cleaning up my room and I was just like, you know what? This is an important topic. I tossed it up there and look at this. It's helped. I, I say helped. It's, it has been seen by 1.8 million people across the world from since 2009 it's when I uploaded it because, you know, I was like, hey, I'll just put these educational videos on YouTube because it's easier. 19,000 people have at least hit the like button. By the way, if you hit the like button on this video, do that because that means that you liked it and it makes me feel good and like I didn't waste my time making this. So that's why I started making them and I put them on YouTube. I was already doing, I had a YouTube channel um, where I was trying to be funny and like make these things and I found out pretty early nobody thinks I'm funny, but they want me to teach them math. So I uh, had that as a separate channel because I didn't want to clutter my original channel, but now my YouTube, uh, my education YouTube channel, Tarver Academy, it has like almost 10,000 more subs than my original one that I cared about, you know, quotation marks. So I did it out of necessity. I didn't do it because I wanted to make money or 
I wanted to like, oh, I want to get famous. I want to do. I don't want to help. I just wanted to help my students. But in the process, I ended up helping students all across the world. And so you can too. Now, if you think, well, no, but how am I going to help people? How am I? Not every student's going to want. No, not every student is going to want to have you teach them the subject. However, do you have students in your class that you connect with? That connect with your personality and the way you teach. Guess what? That same percentage of whatever your class is, say it's 10% of your students genuinely connect and they you're their favorite teacher and how you teach. 10%. Think of 10% of all the students doing that across the world and how you could help them and connect with them better than their in-classroom teacher or another teacher on YouTube or me. They could connect with you more than connect with me. So I want to encourage you. You can do this. You can make videos. And also, it's fun because you kind of, um, and I don't want to say like, go into it knowing that you're probably going to get some rando comments every now and then, especially if a video gets popular. About out of one out of every, you know, 30 or 40 video uh, comments on my videos, somebody's making fun of me. So literally, all of you guys could make fun of me in the comments based on this video. I've probably heard it a hundred times before. So <laughs> that's true. But and don't be, don't be discouraged by that because it's usually just like my accent. Like, they're like, wow, this guy talks like he's from Arkansas. I'm like, like well, I am from Arkansas, so that's why I talk like that. <laughs> talk the way we're supposed to talk. Everybody else got the accent. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nope. Okay. So, um, I'm going to talk about curating first. Now, this is for the people that are never going to create a video on YouTube, but they might want to build out resources for their students, staff, or whoever that they want to through their YouTube channel. Okay? But this also applies to people that are creating their own videos. So, don't check out or scrub to the end if you're wanting to create videos, I mean, you can do whatever you want, I'm not your boss, but don't think this is not for you. These are things that you can do and also you can teach your students to do to where they're actually curating and finding content for your class. Another fun thing about making videos is a decade later, you can look at them like I'm looking at this photo right now and I'm regretting my hair choices. I don't know what was happening there, what was with that's called like a faux hawk, like a fake mohawk where you just kind of like push it together. And I've almost got like a mini mullet. That's that's terrible. I'm so sorry, guys. Anybody in there rock the faux hawk? Let me know if you did in the comments. What What is the most embarrassing hairstyle you ever sported? Flock of seagulls? Y'all know what I'm talking about. So uh, it's fun to go back and watch them later and you still get comments all the time. So here we go. Um, we're going to start real basic. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because a lot of you have already done this because you're on a YouTube channel right now watching this so it's pretty evident if you do or don't have a YouTube channel. So let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is located at youtube.com. Fun fact, if you search the letter youtube.com, it goes to like this welding supply company and they have sued YouTube multiple times because people misinterpret how to go to YouTube and they go to their site and it crashes because of all the traffic. You think they'd have already sold it by now. Like you could retire off of selling something to YouTube. So here we go. Um, if you're on YouTube, in the upper right-hand corner, that's where you can see if you're signed in or not. If it says sign in, you're not signed in. Now, what do you need to create a YouTube account? All you need is a Gmail account. Okay, so if you have a Gmail account, you automatically can just click that sign in. It's going to ask you which email or Gmail account do you want to attach it to. You select it. It's probably going to ask you like to create a name for your stuff. Do not worry, it is not going to start recording you and putting you on YouTube immediately, okay? I promise. But it will help you go in here so that you can start tailoring your experience around you. And you'll use that email to sign in. Now, a lot of teachers will ask me, should I, should I create a YouTube channel under my school email or my personal email? It's a great question. Um, this is what I always default to. My default is create it under a personal email account, and here's why. Because then you have control of it. So say you don't teach at that school, like 15 years from now you don't teach at the school, okay? Let's, you love the school, it's the greatest school ever. As soon as you leave, about six months later they're probably gonna delete your account, okay? So you won't have access to change, delete, add, do anything to those videos, it's out of your control. But if it's under yours, and it's not breaking any of your school policies or rules, then you will have control of those and you can keep those videos forever, as long as you want. You might want to delete the whole page, that's fine. It's under your control and you get to control that and it's not at the whim of someone else. So I recommend your personal account under your personal email, but again, I'm not you, you do what you want, okay? So you click that to sign in and that's, that's how you sign in, it's pretty simple. Step number two, the basics, subscribing. Find the stuff or people or channels that you like and hit subscribe. 
Like even earlier when I was like, hey guys, would you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it if you hit that red subscribe button under the video. Some of you guys didn't do it because you're like, I don't know if I like anything else that they put. That's fine. Guess what? You can unsubscribe. It's literally two clicks to unsubscribe, okay? It's free to subscribe to people and it's free to unsubscribe and I won't get notified if you unsubscribe or leave later. All it does is it says like, hey, you did this for me. I'm going to subscribe and it makes it easier to find their content later okay you're not going to be inundated with my content just because you hit subscribe but you might see a video that's related to the one you're watching now pop up in front of your face in the future and that's the same for any channel if you like a video that you see it's better to subscribe and then unsubscribe if you don't like it down the road than not subscribing and then you can't find it down the road okay so there you go here's how you subscribe right here this is this is a screenshot of my channel on youtube you would just go in and you click the red subscribe button, that is from the channel. Now, you can also do it from a video. So let's say I go to youtube.com. Here we go, we're going to YouTube. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I don't think I'm subscribed to ESPN, so we'll click on a video. Now, from the video, and again, you can see this on this video that you're watching, unless you're watching it through my website, Um, Let's see, boom. This is how most of y'all's probably looks. Right there, see the bottom right? See that right there? That is where you like. So if you haven't liked this video, do that under here as practice. You can share. This is where you can send it to people. And this red is where you subscribe. Boom. I'm subscribed. And you're like, well, how do you unsubscribe, Tyler? Oh, no, I didn't mean to subscribe. You click it again. It's going to say, are you sure? You say unsubscribe. That's it. It's that easy. So if you see something you like, subscribe to it. Don't be stingy with your subs. That's the truth. Okay, that's just Tyler's advice. All right, I'm not giving away right now. I mean, if you want to do a giveaway, we can. Just... Like and subscribe. Okay, so I want to kind of break down um, what you're going to see when you search so you know how to filter between anything you're looking for. So let's say if you want to practice and you're not doing it, like I'm giving you a link to leave what I'm talking about, but if you have your phone out or a tablet or something besides what you're watching this on, go to youtube.com and in the search, search Tarver Academy. Okay, that's my channel, Tarver Academy. So it's safe. I'm not going to, nothing inappropriate will pop up. Now, from my screen, you can see, I'm gonna explain a few things that you're gonna be able to differentiate between as you search for things. First one at the top, do you see the circle? The circle around my face in front of the YouTube Space New York background from the Google Innovator. What's up, Google Innovators? Am I Google Innovator? Say holla. Hey, any Google Innovators in here? If you are, tell me in the, in the description. I'd love to hear it. If not, you should definitely apply. Tell them Tyler sent you, okay? Um, so, from that, sorry, I got distracted. So from the circle, if you see a circle, that is a profile of an account, okay? Then they'll see like Tarver Academy, that's the name of my account. And then it tells you their subscriber count, how many videos they have, and then it gives you a short description about them, okay? You can subscribe directly from here. So we've talked about you can subscribe from someone's channel page. You can subscribe directly under any video to the channel that made the video, or you can subscribe from here on the search, okay? Now, look underneath it, those two rectangles underneath it. Those are what you call videos, okay? What you actually see, like as the picture, you know, it says Google Professional Development, and then it's got like another one underneath it. It's got me in that purple long sleeve shirt with the border. Those are either like a, like a still frame from the video, or I've uploaded a, a graphic to represent what it is. So like that first one says Google Professional Development. That's a graphic I made in Canva and uploaded that is called the thumbnail, okay? So you're looking at it, that's supposed to attract people to your video. Um, you can, there you go, that's it, that's a video, it's a rectangle. Now, the third rectangle underneath my circle, that right there, do you see the difference in that video? It's a thumbnail, but then also like, the, on the, the right side of it, the right 40 to 45% of it, it's like this black bar with a number that says 96. That is what's called a playlist. A playlist is essentially a grouping of videos based on whatever that YouTuber wanted to group them on. So we're going to talk about playlists here in a second, but that's how you differentiate what a playlist is versus a single video versus a channel. Okay? And you can actually, in the search, when you click that little search, little magnifying glass, you can narrow it down. You see above my face on the circle, it says filter. That's where you can click and you can only search, oh, I want to find some math YouTubers. You could literally click filter, say channels is all you want to go for, and search just for YouTube math channels, okay? So that's it's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't want to take every time showing you how to do it. 
Um, here's a, a tweet that I thought was funny. It says, my friend's toddler babbled, don't forget to subscribe as he was put to bed. Kid watches so much YouTube, he thought it means goodbye. And people laugh and they think it's funny. I think it's funny. You might not be laughing. You might be laughing hysterically, okay? Cool. We have good similar senses of humor. But I think this is funny because it's true. This becomes part of culture with a certain group of students or a group of young people or a certain generation. It's the same way with like the older generation. Facebook is becoming a community and a culture because that's where they all are. TikTok is now becoming a culture and community. And they all kind of take on their own perspectives. Like and subscribe. You heard me say it at the beginning. I literally am wearing a shirt that says, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's something that they say because it helps the YouTubers out. So YouTubers say it and it just becomes common nomenclature. So there you go. Am I using nomenclature correct there? Tell me in the comments. Say, Tyler, you're not very smart. You said it wrong. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. I've heard it before. Like I said, YouTube comments. All right, and the next one. This is what, if you have students that start making YouTube channels, as soon as they upload a video, this is the first thing they will ask about. Monetization which means making money off your videos. So the ads on the side, uh, before you click play on a video, it pops up the ad at the beginning and it's like, hey, you know, try out this tutor person or whatever it is, tutoring. I get a lot of tutoring ads on mine because they're math videos, or some of them are. And so uh, whenever they pop up, those ads, because you're viewing them, that makes the creator money. Uh, if it is, um, it makes the creator money. If like, if you click on it, if you click on that ad, it actually makes them a lot more money. So the the, the second most I ever made in a month uh, on YouTube was because apparently in one of my videos, there was an ad on there for a tutoring service and the guy kind of looked like me because I just looked like a standard random dude. And uh, did they, he looked like me, so they thought it was me giving the tutoring and so a bunch of them clicked on it. It made me more money that month just because they clicked on it. But just getting views of those ads, the reps of that brand getting in front of their consumers, that, that allows them to uh, make money. So, or allows the, the creator to make money. If you wanna know the percentage, it's usually around 300 views gets you a penny. So the next time your, your kid, my kids are like, when can I start buying stuff? I make this, you know, these gaming videos. It's like, well, we gotta get a lot of views before you do that, bro. You're not even close. And so whenever they, like your kids or your students wanna start making money off of it, they can't even monetize their videos from a new channel until they get like 4,000 watch hours in a month or 4,000 total watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. So it takes a while now to get it and people are like, oh, why can't I monetize right away? Because you could for a while. Um, there for a few years until there was a video uploaded that was inappropriate that they were like, okay, we need to get stricter on our guidelines and they cut back on it. Thanks, Logan Paul. And um, that's why they created the rule of 1,000 subs. And don't be discouraged because based on the regulations, you're making like a dollar and 30 cents up until that point. That's what you're missing out on until you get the watches. So don't be discouraged, just keep plugging away. Here's what I, uh, this is what I tell people that wanna create a YouTube channel. If you're doing it for the money, you're gonna burn out. You are gonna burn out. I have been on YouTube for 13 years now. I've been on it since 2007 making videos and I still make videos every week on YouTube. If I was doing it to make money, I would have gotten frustrated, quit, and put my time somewhere else. I'm doing it because I wanna help teachers and students learn and grow. I wanna help people get better. I wanna help people learn. That's what I'm passionate about. That's why I do it. I don't do it for, I mean, this, this entire training right here, this is something that schools like used to pay me to come do or conferences paid me to come do. I'm putting it out for free because I know in these times, people need these resources. And so it's it, that matters more to me then oh, I'm gonna hold out and not present it because of this. Like people want me to come, I'll, they'll ask me, but I wanna do this because I wanna help people learn, grow, make their classroom better, make themselves better. So find out what you're passionate about, what you would do if you never made a dollar on it and lean into that. That's my best advice. This also helps if you know what you're talking about. So <laughs> number four, notifications. You'll hear sometimes on YouTube videos, people are like, subscribe, and then make sure you turn on the notifications, and then go on your phone and turn on the settings for notifications to be hit, because it's like this whole process now. Um, I said earlier, just because you're subscribed to somebody doesn't mean you're gonna see all their videos. That's why they ask you to turn on notifications, because if you turn on notifications, every time that YouTuber uploads a video, you'll be notified, and it'll give you a push notification that you can ignore or not ignore, and you can click that, and then go watch it. And it's like, it's a better way for them to see it. And that's why YouTubers want you to because 
They want you to see the content because they're putting a lot of time, effort, and energy into it and they want people to see it, not randomly based on an algorithm. A few years ago, I had some videos, some math videos that were getting, I mean, they were getting you know, 10 to 15,000 views a month and it was helping a lot of people and I was making a little bit of money for them. And they did that for three or four or five years and they were doing great. Had like three, two or 300,000 views on it. And then 2016, YouTube changed their algorithm and bam, now they get no views. They don't get in the searches. They're just not one of the top two or three searches. So I don't make any money off of them. I don't get anybody to see them. That's when I realized I could upload to try to hit some algorithm or I can just make content that is gonna provide people value. And you'll see some of that stuff that I've been doing here. And it's like, I don't care what the views get when I first upload, because I'm doing it for that. I'm doing it to help teachers and students down the road, giving them teachers resources they can use every day for 180 days. That's what I wanna do. Um, so notifications are great because it helps people get those immediate views and you're not relying on the algorithm to just randomly put your stuff in front of people. So um, the on the left, that's an example of my page. On the right, there's a little bell. Next, after you subscribe, a little bell pops up. That's where you can control your notifications. When you click on it, and I've zoomed in on it right there, you can choose, it starts off with personalized. That means YouTube chooses when they push your videos in front of people. You can say none, which means I never want to be notified when this person uploads a video, or all. That means that they're going to make sure that you know through either a push notification or an email or something, they'll choose whatever route they think works best for you. You'll know when that person uploads a video. So if something matters to you, if a channel, you like it or you like the content or you want to know when they make more stuff, turn on those notifications. I'm not saying do it for me unless I fall into the categories of what you just said. So, playlists. Oh look, Michael Jordan. He uh, showed up, promoted my channel. So nice of him. A lot of people don't know that he, he looks like that, but he does. Hashtag the last dance. Okay, so we're talking playlists. This is helpful for anybody, okay? Anytime you see like a floating head on this presentation, that is a link. If it's a floating head or a 90s cartoon, that is a link to something. So number one on playlists, they are so you can, you can organize similar or related materials. That, if you click on Drake's laughing face, what that is, it takes you to a tutorial that I made on how to create a playlist, okay? So it's just me walking you through how to do that, which we don't have to watch all of that, so I'm gonna bounce away from it. Okay, so that's what you wanna do. You wanna organize similar playlists. Next, number two, you wanna gather this information, you wanna gather these videos into playlists from multiple channels. So if I, make a, if I make a playlist, it doesn't just have to be my videos. If I'm making a playlist on solving linear inequalities, I can put two of my videos and then three videos from Yay Math. And I can have those in there in one random video from Khan Academy, which I would never do because I like Yay Math and myself. <laughs> just kidding, good job Khan, you're not watching. Okay, so you can put videos from any channel into a playlist. So don't think that you're restricted to just that one channel for a playlist. Number three, you can put a video into multiple playlists. So for instance, my slope intercept formula video, I have that in like seven different playlists. It's in my slope playlist, it's in my intro to geometry playlist, it's in my ACT prep, my, you know, in New York Regents prep. Like it's in multiple playlists because it applies to all of those things. So if you have a video that's good, put it wherever it could apply. Next, let the students build the playlists. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. You can have students find the information they actually connect with instead of you trying to guess like, oh, I think they'll like this video. You can have the students create it and put it in there. Oh goodness, I didn't, uh, I didn't link to it. I'll, I'm gonna go, I'll drop the link in the chat to this. I just made a video on this, on how to do this. Cause I was looking through and I was gonna link to it. And I noticed, I was like, hey, this is, uh, this is not like, I don't have a video on this. But what this means is you can create a playlist, say it's called the American Revolution. You can create the playlist and then your assignment for your class can be, hey, everybody, you can drop the link in your Google Classroom and your assignment can be, everybody find a video that is five minutes or less, I just like my own video, five minutes or less on the American Revolution and put it in to this playlist. So the students are building out, there we go, now it's linked in there. The students are building out the, the playlist themselves. And you're just gonna say, make sure it's appropriate, make sure that it applies what we're talking about, put it in there, go. And then the students, that's their assignment. 
they're watching videos, finding them, all this. They watch that, and then like you can have them summarize the video. So you don't have to watch them. It's a resource for everybody. But then you have your students present in class, and they're recapping the video in like 30 seconds or less. Like that would be great. That's a great, man, that's a great lesson. You should do that. So let the students build them. Examples. Um, this needs to go. Bye. Okay, example. There's me teaching people about Google. That was actually part of my Google trainer um, exam. Any Google trainers in here? Tell me in the, in the comments if you're a Google trainer. If not, pass the level one exam, then pass the level two exam, then apply to be a trainer. Tell them Tyler sent you. Okay, so examples. Examples on how to use YouTube videos. You can use YouTube videos directly in a Google form. Who owns Google Forms? Google does. Who owns YouTube? Google does. Guess what? Google wants their stuff to work great across every Google platform. They want it to be incredible for everybody. So here it is. Here's an editing, like making a, uh, I'm making a Google form. I can actually put the video I want to teach them on in there. So I click the plus sign. Oh, I don't want to add a question. I'm sorry. You want to go to add video. This little one looks like a video. Duh. No, I say duh. Wow, 1997. Okay, from here, it in you don't have to go to YouTube and find the link. You can, and I can paste the URL, or I could just search, you know, slope intercept. And I can search the videos, search all of YouTube directly from Google Forms. And so I can select my video. Hey, what's up? Boom. I've got the video in there. I never had to leave. I never had to go anywhere else. I can incorporate it into my lesson directly from Google Forms. Okay, next, where else can teachers use it? I think I've got a link down there at the bottom left. It's on how to insert a YouTube video in Forms. So it's actually a tutorial on what I just showed you how to do. Um, also, and I, if you were with me on my last PD about collaborating and communicating with Google, which I have a link to in the description if you haven't seen it, it's 45 minutes, it's a PD for you. Um, this is a resource I think that teachers are underutilizing, and I, as a you know, teacher and former teacher and administrator, um, I thought what would be a resource, a free resource that could help teachers in their classrooms. Now, it still applies if you're in a virtual classroom, but it also applies if you're in a physical classroom, like in actually in a setting. And so, what I thought is, as a teacher. I had to do bell ringers every day. And if you're not familiar with bell ringers, that's something like a problem you put on the board or you post in your classroom that students work on the first two to five minutes of every class that you have. And the idea is that it keeps them occupied where they're learning something without you having to teach it because you, at the first of class, you have to take role. You've got to pass out assignments to the people that missed class the day before. You've got administrative stuff you have to do at the beginning of class. This lets them learn in the process. Now, the problem is, if you're a good teacher and you just have the problem on the board and the students, they don't know how to work it, a student or two might ask you, hey, I don't understand, how do I work this? And you're a good teacher and you'll walk over and help them, you're not doing the administrative stuff. So what I thought is, what if I take the entire process of presenting, like thinking of the problem, of delivering the problem, of the students working it, and of showing them how to work it, like example, all in one video. So I did this with math. I started creating, I call them problem of the day or bell ringers or whatever, and I started putting them in here. So if you're a math teacher of pretty much seventh grade and up, you could have a video every day for every day of school, and you could just post it at eight in the morning and send it out to all your classes at the same time, which there's a feature on, I've got a tutorial on that. Um, you could send it out to all your classes at the same time, and then they answer it in the comments. They create a discussion on it. Now, you're thinking, well, I'm not a math teacher, that doesn't help me. I thought of that. I thought, you know, this is helpful for math teachers to have that problem every day, but what about everybody else? And so I thought like I could make a whole like 180 videos for math, one for 180 for English, 180 for science. I was like, one, I'm not great at science. I'm, I'm okay, like I'm medium, but I'm not like, I don't want to make 180 videos on it. So if you are a science teacher, make some, send me the link, I'll start promoting you in here. Um, I thought, what's something I could do that could help students learn and grow and could apply to almost every subject and start a discussion about something that it's like, it's leading them somewhere good, positive, so they can't go too random, but also they're having to think and comment and respond. And I love quotes. Does anybody here love quotes? If you love quotes, how about this? If you love quotes, put your favorite quote in the comments. I would love to hear it, and I might even make a quote of the day video on it. I started making what I called Rock the Quote. You get it? Rock the Vote. Rock the Quote. It was a quote of the day bell ringer every day. They're anywhere from two to four minutes 
Try to keep them short, but sometimes, you know, it's a good quote. You got to talk about it. And so I made 180 of these. I put them in a playlist. And so literally once a week, you could sit down for 10 minutes and you could assign every morning at 8 a.m. to schedule one of these videos, a different quote of the day video. And you could just copy paste the same instructions every day. And I even put an example instructions in here. So you could just copy paste from here. It says, hello class. Watch today's video for quote of the day, and in the comments of this post, give your thoughts on the quote and how it applies to you. So not only are you having students think about it, they're thinking, how can I apply this to where I am? And they're commenting in there. You're creating discussion. The other students are going to see it. You're going to get to know your students better. They're going to get to know each other better. You're building a community working towards something. Um, do you agree or disagree with Tyler? Because I say that in the video. I was like, tell me if you agree or disagree. Like I'm trying to guide them without you having to do all the work. I want to do the work for you. Um, and then I said, make sure to reply at least one classmate. Creating discussion, keep it kind in the comments, reminding them to be kind. So you can literally copy paste those same instructions every day, and then you just go down the line and grab the link to all those videos and toss them in. And I've got extras, so you could go in and grab some that if you're like, I don't like, you know, Wayne Gretzky. So you can skip Wayne Gretzky and go to somebody else. So that's the idea. If it has you value, please use it. The links are in here. It's tarveracademy.com slash quote. If you want to just know, I've got like a list of all the quotes. So feel free to use that um, whatever way helps you in the classroom. But that's the idea. If you don't use my quote of the day or my math problem of the day, find a channel that has a plethora of videos that are about five minutes or less and use those as bell ringers, okay? In the comments, if you know of this, please let me know. If you know a channel that has this, let me know. I have not found one, but I wanna add those to, to my list so I can provide teachers with value. Um, also, you can teach via your device. You can send the videos to your classes directly from your device. An app that's really good that I've used for a bunch of my videos a few years ago was Explain Everything. I would have students, I was like, hey, if you have a question, take a picture of your question on about math, uh, tweet it at me on Twitter, and then I'll just take that, import it to explain everything, and I'll work the problem. Uh, Notability is also really good for this. If you've ever used Notability, I should have put that on here. Notability is a great app as well. Um, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can just do screen record. That's an, a feature on it. Um, it's, you just go up here, you swipe down from up here, and then do you see the little dot with the circle on it? Right there, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, goodness. It's right there, the screen record. Okay, so you can actually record your voice and what you're doing on your screen um, and not have to show yourself. So you can actually do the videos in your PJs and just project it out. So that's another option for teachers. You can also create via your laptop or your desktop. If you have a Mac, just use QuickTime. That's what I'm literally using to record the presentation. I'm recording that through QuickTime. So it's right now, it's almost four gigs worth of, of a screen recording. That's not including the gigs off of this. Um, Chromebook, you can use Screencastify. That's a great app. It records your screen and your voice. And then Windows is called Screen Recorder. I've never used Screen Recorder, so I'm not going to vouch for it, but I Googled it and that's what they said is good. So also, when I was a principal of a school, I would do my announcements through video as well. If you're a teacher or an administrator, you can deliver announcements to your students or your staff through this and it's a way for them to connect with you. Um, you can make inside jokes. People love inside jokes. It's one of the big things with people who find community in YouTubers is that they have these inside jokes, these nicknames. Hey, they uh, like nicknames for their fans. Um, you know, that's what they call them. Like, hey out there, you Jake Paulers or you David Dobrickers. I don't know what he calls them, but they have nicknames for their people. Um, so that's, that's a good feature and you can connect with people that you might not get to see face to face if you're not doing face to face classes or students and parents that you don't get to meet with every day. Um, this is what I did and it was a great way to connect with all of my students and I would also bring students in to be in the videos with me and so that's an example like we can watch. See? Oh, is it going to play? No, nope, it's not going to play. Cool. Good talk. Nope. Excellent. Well, if you click on that link, if you have the presentation, that is a link to an example video of one that I made. Okay, so this is a creepy looking photo, but it was the thumbnail for a video that explains the point I'm about to tell you. Let's talk about YouTube. Shorter videos are for TikTok, like a minute or less TikTok, okay? If you want something that is anywhere from, you know, 30 seconds to 10 minutes, you probably might watch it on Instagram. YouTube is not only for two minute or less videos. YouTube is now evolved into a long form content location, like Netflix. YouTube is like Netflix. You'll go on Netflix and watch a full season. People go to YouTube and watch eight hours worth of a vlogger that they just found that they like. 
It is a resource of any length of video. And the reason I have this, that guy on the left is named Shane Dawson. The guy on the right, his name is Jake Paul. Shane Dawson did essentially a docu-series where he is delving into the mind of Jake Paul. And he's getting to know him as a person and interviewing his friends and researching him. And this video right here, this video is an hour and 45 minutes long. It was the last video in an eight video series, I think. And it was an hour and 45 minutes long. In the first three hours that video was on YouTube, it had over 10 million views. 10 million views in three hours for an hour and 45 minute YouTube video. Okay, whenever people, whenever I'm consulting people or talking to them about videos, they ask, how long should my YouTube video be? Short or long? I said, it should be as long as you have their attention. It should be as long as it is engaging. Don't shorten it just to shorten it and don't make it longer just to make it longer. Talk as long as you want to, as long as you feel like you're providing value or entertainment and that's when you stop. That's what you do with the YouTube video. And the example I always use, and I think I got this from Gary Vee, it's a great example. In the comments, tell me this. If you would watch, if they came out with a five hour Star Wars movie, tell me in the comments if you would watch it. Okay? Say, I would watch a five hour Star Wars movie. If they came out with a 30 second Star Wars movie, full movie in 30 seconds, if you would clip off of it before the end because you don't care about it, Tell me in the comments. Tell me if you're on team five hours or team 30 seconds. The point is, there are people that love Star Wars and would watch five hours worth of it. They cannot get enough. Then there are people who do not care about it at all and they will go to another video within 30 seconds if they click on it because they don't care. People will watch things as long as they want to. Um, I don't have this in the notes, but I want to tell you guys this because, well, that's what I want to do. I want to provide you value and I want to teach you stuff. So. Um, I'm doing my dissertation right now, and I'm doing it on what makes people watch educational videos. What retains them? Is it graphics? Is it someone they know? Is it what? Is, what qualities does a video have that keeps the attention of learners? Okay. In every research study I can find that I've been looking at, there are by far two reasons people will stop watching a YouTube video. Either a they're confused. They don't understand what's going on. I gave you this whole presentation when we started this. I gave you the link to it. At any point, you could look through this presentation and you could see if any of this applies to you. They want to know. Uh, they want to know what's going on, so they don't be confused. And number two, they want to see how it applies to them. Does this apply to me? When they click on a video, they want to know what's going on. I don't want to be confused. And two, how does this apply to me? Those are the top two reasons people watch a YouTube video. If you're not, if you're confusing people and, or they don't see how like it matters to them, they're not gonna watch it. That is proven by research. So that one's for fun. Okay, so let's talk about what's popular right now. Number one, vlogs. You know what blogs are? Blogs where people use written text on the internet to tell stories or talk about things. Vlog is a video blog. Vlog, see what I did there? That is where people are talking about are showing their day or things that are going on in their life and they're documenting it through video. Um, popular vloggers, they collaborate with each other, they have their own channels, they have nicknames for the people. It's a whole community around that person in their life. And you think, well, who cares about somebody from California or New York or the Midwest or whatever? Who cares about what some random person is doing every day? That sounds super boring. Do you care about your friends? Do you care about your spouse? Do you care about the people around you? Yes, because they matter to you because they're connected to you. You resonate, they resonate with you somehow. You connect with them. You know their story, so it matters. If you just go and click on a random vlog of somebody, you're not going to care. It might entertain you. You might learn something, but you aren't really going to care about them. But just think if you watched a video of someone for 15 minutes a day, every single day for a year, you're gonna feel like that person is one of your best friends because you're getting to know them. You know their personality. You know the things they've done. You know their family. It's why young people and even older people feel so connected to people across the internet because they're seeing their life. Think of this. When was the last time somebody came to you and they act like they knew you? You had no idea who they were, but they're naming off like your kids or your dog's name or whatever you've been doing because you put it on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. People connect with people across, across, platforms all the time because there are people on the other end. 
People connect with people, okay? Keep that in mind. Next, tutorials. People learn on the internet. There are two reasons people will watch something. And this is Netflix, this is TV, this is YouTube, anything. There's two reasons they'll watch it. Either because it educates them, they're learning something, or it entertains them. Education or entertainment. The best do both, okay? So people will watch tutorials. YouTube is an amazing database to learn. Three, lists and reviews. People are reviewing TV shows, movies, books, everything. I have one, I call it Tarver Book Club. I review books, link in the bio, if you wanna see any of those videos. It's where you review stuff, you talk about your opinion, your thoughts. When you really care about something, you wanna to talk to people about it, you wanna to listen to people about it. This is not new, like, this is how people commentate on stuff forever, you know, man in the arena. Number four, gaming. So many people think this is such a silly thing for people to watch. It is a huge industry, and the reason that people like Steph Curry and Drake and LeBron James are investing money into these gaming teams and these gaming platforms is because it is a huge industry where people will literally watch other people play video games, either because they're good, so they're learning how to play, or they're entertaining. Educate, entertain. So gaming is a, a, an area that YouTube has literally broken off almost and made its own YouTube, like whole this whole sector, of YouTube because gaming is so popular. Number five, people will watch YouTube for the news. Uh, think of this. Think of, you know, think of an, a TV channel, okay? Think of a TV channel that you know leans one way, left or right, okay? They're, the people that watch that channel, they have the same point of view as that channel because that channel says things that reinforce what they think. It reinforces something they care about, a core value, their personality, something that they resonate with, so they watch it and that becomes more and more where they get their news and their information. Now, another news station can take the same story and they twist it or turn it to where it's the it, it applies to the other side. And people that watch that, watch it for a reason. Then there's some that are in the middle that are more like, this is fact, this is what, I, that what we know, bam, bam, bam. But people watch stuff because it reinforces their point of view or their worldview. With YouTube, you can get even more narrow down niches and lanes for getting your news. You can be like, oh, I think that, you know, all trees are, you know, dragon remains that have grown up from the ground. And you could probably find a YouTube channel that supports that. It's like, well, if you look at this manuscript from this thing, it shows that dinosaurs became trees. Like, you can find things that support your point of view. And all we're doing is we're widening the scope of where you can get information, and so that happens a lot on YouTube. And the last one I have listed on here is unboxing videos. They are what they are, you know? Like, it's where you open something or you show something. Uh, my daughter used to love these, and it was before she was in kindergarten. She would watch these, like, unboxing of these toy videos. She was, they were like, they were like, oh, you know, Elsa's opening up, look, or we're opening up, and she just shows her hands, they're like, here we are opening up this box, and look at this Elsa doll from Frozen. Look how great it is, its arms move like this. I was so afraid when my daughter went to kindergarten, she was gonna be a little weirdo and she was gonna be like, push out her pencil box. She goes, watch as Ezra opens up her pencil box. Look at her number two Ticonderoga and like start describing what she's doing like an unboxing video. She didn't, she's good. I don't think she did. I mean, she has a, a couple friends, so hopefully we're good to go. Just kidding, she's great. So that's curation. That is a grand scope of what you can get from the platform of YouTube. Now, I wanna talk to you about creation. I want to talk to you about creating. I'm going to give you some tips for creating for YouTube. And if you're thinking to yourself, I'm never going to make a video and put it up. You might not, but your students might. So check out. These are some resources for letting your students create these videos or yourself. Number one, devices and programs. Depending on what device you have, there are different programs to edit on, to film on, all of it. If you have a Mac, iMovie comes standard, it's free. It's a great resource. Now, if you've got a Mac and you wanna upgrade your video and do it off of like a better system, Final Cut Pro I think is like 300 bucks and you can get that. It's an awesome, it's what I use. I use Final Cut Pro, it's what this was all edited on. Windows, if you wanna pay money for a good program, you can use Adobe Premiere. Pretty much every movie you see in theaters was, edit was edited on Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. Last one, Chromebooks, if your school has Chromebooks, you can do that on Wii Video or YouTube. Now you're thinking, what if we have iPads or iPhones, something like that, an Apple device that is not a MacBook or a laptop? You can use iMovie on there as well, it's free. You can edit through iMovie or you can use Clips. Clips is also a great option and it's super easy to use. 
The only thing is there's just a little bit less features than you could get with iMovie, a little less control. Next, what should you shoot with? Okay, here are some important things to keep in mind as you shoot with whatever device you're shooting with. Number one, you want decent quality. Quality is great if you got it, but don't ever not create something because your quality isn't what you want. Number two, you need forward-facing audio. Right now, I have a mic attached to my camera. It is facing me because I'm the one speaking. It's a little echoey, not bad, but it's a little echoey because I'm in my office and we didn't plan for that. Um, number three, you need a tripod. It's something to prop your camera or your phone on. That just helps because then you can choose your placement. I'm on a tripod right now. You want it to be easy to export. So if you're putting it on a card and you don't have something to adapt that to your laptop, then you're not gonna make the video. Do it in whatever, shoot it on whatever you need to, to get that, get that whatever, you know, that film to where it needs to be long term. If you click on cat dog up here in the corner, it goes to a part of a video from Casey Neistat. What he essentially says is, what you're shooting with is fine, but don't let like, oh, I can't shoot this unless I have a good device or unless I have this or this or this. No, you know what? I'm gonna skip, it doesn't matter. You know what matters? Is that you're actually making it. And the best device that you have on you right now is your phone. If you don't have a phone, then, then ignore what I just said. But if you have a phone, that right there is a great tool to shoot, edit, and upload your entire video. So do not be discouraged. Do not wait until you get a $1,000 camera, a $5,000 camera. These cameras on these phones are awesome. Just have decent lighting. And I actually have a video, I've linked it later in this presentation, on tips to shoot with your iPhone. So we'll look at that in a second. Now, if you want my actual setup, say you have a budget or you've got some money or you really wanna like lean in to YouTube, which again, I think you should. Everybody's got a personality that people would connect with, students can connect with beyond your normal classroom. I've linked to my entire setup, the camera you're watching this on right now, the mic I'm using, the tripod I've got it on, and the lighting, the ring light that I've got around it. Um, and you can see it, look, I'll show you. Boom, look at that. Oh goodness, can y'all see that? That's not working, that's showing me, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, there you go. That's my ring light, that's my camera setup. It's hard to see, but that's what I'm using. That's linked there, and that's, um, I used that camera as like a vlog style when I was in DC, and I made a bunch of DC like fun fact videos, which you can use for your class, it's free. I've got a link in there to those. Um, so those are, five, that's five bell ringers right there if you've got a history class. Find videos that you can use. If you watch this video right here, um, I don't know, maybe when I'm editing this, I'll clip it in. If not, click that link. You can watch that video of me giving you tips on how to shoot with an iPhone. What's up guys, Tyler here. I'm so excited you're joining me today on Tarver Academy YouTube channel. We are learning best practices, tips, tricks for shooting iPhone video. Hey, this camera's better. I'm gonna use it. So what I wanna do today is I wanna tell you some really quick tips for shooting the best iPhone video. Oh, hey, sweetheart. Sorry, uh, my wife was uh, playing the drums on dishes. Great, great tune, but also not great for video. So that's number one, cut out external noise. Am I right, guys? So there are two main components to shooting video on your phone. And the first main one is the video. Obviously, the clarity of the picture. Right now, this is my camera setup. This is phone setup. This is me on my phone. This is me on a camera. This is an iPhone 11. This is uh, my wife's phone. I have a 10. It's it's a little fuzzy on the, the selfie mode, so I decided to use this one for a little bit more clear. One thing you wanna do is you wanna hold the phone eye level, like this. See this? About eye level with it, with the, with the camera, with the phone, holding it up right here. If you hold it low, it looks like your dad on a Zoom call. Hey guys, I'm your dad. How's it going, everybody? It's like your dad just turned on FaceTime and he doesn't know how it works. He's like, excuse me, hey, how's it going? <laughs> this right here looks like you're taking a selfie in the bathroom. Hey, what's up guys? Thank you for coming to my Snapchat and my TikTok Instagram. What you wanna do is you wanna hold it eye level. <laughs> so that's if you're holding it. But if you want to stack it, like you want, you're gonna talk for a long time, you don't wanna put your arm up here, you need to use your hands for something else. I will stack some books, because most of us don't have tripods. I'll stack some books on my desk, prop my phone up in front of the books. Still trying to keep it eye level. I don't wanna keep it to where it's on like the table, because that's just a weird angle. Hey guys, welcome to class today, or welcome to my vlog. You wanna prop it up where it's almost eye level if you can. I think this is a lot better angle. But what do I know? I'm just a math YouTube teacher. Solving systems 
by substitution. Next tip, make sure, and this, is, this seems silly, but this is legit. Make sure you hit record on your phone. And usually I let it see, I see it about like one or two seconds in before I start talking. You don't just wanna hit record and go. Sometimes it doesn't go through. Sometimes you don't actually click record. So make sure you hit record, watch it start counting up one or two seconds and then start talking. The next one is look at the camera, okay? So whenever we're on here, this is me looking at the camera. This is me looking at myself. Hey guys, thank y'all for coming to today's class. This is me talking on Tarver Academy YouTube channel. This is me actually looking at the camera. It looks like I'm talking to you, correct? Because I'm staring straight down the barrel of the camera lens. If you're not, if you're looking off to the side a little bit, it looks like you're not talking to them. Meet my eyeline, Jim. See this? You wanna look straight at the camera. The tendency, again, is to look at yourself, but you don't wanna do that. Make sure you're framed up, turn. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Tarver Academy, like, subscribe. And the next one, and this is one that people, this is honestly most important for it not being grainy, is you want decent lighting. Here's a window, you see that window? You do not wanna film with the window at your back. See that? It makes me dark. Watch my face as I turn around. See that? See how much more clear it gets? I'm allowing this light to come in and reflect on my face, and that's what the camera is getting. So don't have a window to your back, have it here. Also, if you're outside, get in the shade. Don't get in direct sunlight. It looks like you're being beamed up to the spaceship. That's, that's number one, is video. Video is important for just being clean, but the most important thing for a video is audio. If people cannot hear you and they can't understand what you're saying, they're gonna check out. So we'll, we'll watch a video if it was looked like it was filmed on a potato, as long as we care what people are saying. Now, I'm holding this too low, that's not even my own tips, that's better. Hey guys, what's up, welcome. For audio, rule number one, make sure you think about what you wanna talk about before you hit record. You don't wanna hit record and be like, um, uh, today we're talking about giraffes, I guess. I don't, um, uh, giraffes are tall. Have in your mind what you want to talk about. Write down like one or two or three points that you want to hit along the way. Please, please, please stay out of the wind. Whenever you have the wind, it sounds like this. Hey, by the way, I didn't mention that's what I use for lighting. It's like a super cheap. Uh, light ring that I got at Best Buy, and I'll put in the description the link if you want to get one of those. It's not from me, so I'm, it's not sponsored, but I'll also put the link to my actual like legit camera setup if you want it. Stay out of the wind. Stay out of the wind, Bullseye. Remember that? Silly story? No? Okay. Ride like the wind, Bullseye. <laughs> one thing I do whenever I'm holding my phone, this is your audio right here. You don't want to cover that up with your hand. You want to be conscious of that. What I do is I like to cup my hand around the audio. See that? It almost becomes like a directional mic with my hand. And that allows the audio to go straight into that little bucket and go straight into the phone. Next, on volume of your voice. I cannot control the volume of my voice. <laughs> no? Okay. I'm unable to control the pitch or volume of my voice. If 100% is screaming at someone, 50% is you talking normal. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Tyler. This is how I talk in a normal conversation. You want to go about 60 to 65%. You want to talk a little bit louder than normal. Just because the louder you are, the more it cuts out that external noise of people doing dishes in the kitchen. So that's it guys. I hope those tips helped. If you would subscribe, that's going to change the world. If you like to learn and grow and just have fun in an online YouTube community. If you like YouTube, subscribe. Everybody's doing it. All right, y'all be good, stay sweet, keep videoing, be good, be nice, stay safe, I'm out. Oh, that's the lighting, not this. Remember, we talked about that. I hate. Why should you make videos? Why should you make videos for your class? Number one, students like them. Students like video. And you think, well, not every student. Movies make a lot of money, okay? People like watching video. The trick is finding videos that they engage with, that they like, that keep their attention. That's what you, That's the trick. Now, you have an edge if it's you making it because people will watch videos longer if it's someone they know, okay? So like, if you're watching this and you know me, thank you for sticking around. What's up, Tyler, it's good to see you. Um, but if you don't, it's meant less to you than someone else on here who knows me in real life or has met me because we have that personal face-to-face -face connection as well.
However, you can still find videos that are really helpful for students that aren't you. Um, also, it allows students to rewatch something. Think of a traditional classroom. If you're teaching something in your class and you say something and a student doesn't understand it, what options do they have to ask you to repeat it? They have to raise their hand and you call on them and they say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Can you explain it again? Which you would do because you're a great teacher, but also what they just did. Some students are fine with asking. Some students, you know this, we, we get these students all the time. They won't ever ask a question even if they don't understand it. You know why? Because they view it as if I raise my hand, that's me admitting to all of my peers that I'm not as smart as them or that I don't understand the things that I understand. We know it's not true as teachers and we try to encourage them not to, but it's the reality of it. If you send them a video or if you give them a video option afterwards, they can pause, rewind, rewatch. They can go in and see it as many times. Like I did a presentation, my last PD I did. Somebody afterwards, they were like, man, you talked really fast. It's hard to keep up. Guess what? They can go back and watch it again. They can pause me. They can rewind. They can rewatch it. They can slow down the speed. They can speed up the speed. If you're watching this PD and you're thinking, wow, I wish this would hurry up. I need to do this to get my PD hours. You can go into your settings and you can speed it up two times speed and get done in twice the time. As long as I don't talk too fast, you can still understand me. There we go. Okay, number three, students will connect with you more. Make it because it helps your students connect with you and that's what we want because we want our students connect with us and care about what about, about us because that's another level of them wanting to pursue their education in a way that is better than just, here's the material, go for it. We connect with students, that's what makes us powerful as teachers. And you're saying to yourself, but I don't want to. You can't make me, guy. First off, don't be so aggressive, okay? That was really mean. Let the students create the videos. If you don't want to make the videos, students love creating. If you're working virtually as a teacher and you're not letting your students go out with their parents' phone or iPad or video camera or whatever and create, you should because students love it and they love seeing themselves on screen and it sounds shallow, but they love it. And then maybe they can teach to their classmates on something. Boom. Okay, I wanna give you the four levels I've analyzed as video types, okay? First one's called The Wizard of Oz. This is the easiest one to make, okay? This video, this type of video, it's like the Khan Academy videos where you just see a screen, you don't see a person, it's just somebody talking, okay? These videos are harder to retain based on my research for my dissertation. The next one, this is called The Chalkboard. This is an example of like, it's just me teaching in front of a board and talking, but like the students are, you know, watching on a video as opposed to watching in person. That's just a classroom moved over there. This one is a slideshow. It's a, this is what I'm doing right now. It's me, you can see me, but also it has my presentation, a slideshow that you can see. That's a great combination because it gives them the graphics, the text, but then also they get to see a human being. It's not just like a voiceover, Wizard of Oz. And number four would be the entertainer. This is like Crash Course does where they clip in clips of real life events or photos or anything else that is something that adds a visual element. Like if you ever watch a documentary, if you watch The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, that was interviews, voiceovers, but then also real clips from back in the day whenever he was playing. So it had all the elements. And did anybody see that? Tell me in the comments, did you see The Last Dance? And what would you rate The Last Dance one to 10? Ooh, and also I love a new documentary. I saw Free Solo, it was incredible. Last Dance was incredible. If you know any other great documentaries, let me know in the comments. The most important part, uh, that's not part of this. Okay, so quick tips. Look at that haircut, that's disgusting. That old video, oh, that's probably why that one didn't get any views anymore because it's it's not, it's, that's gross. It's like a dirty mullet, Blah. Okay, here we go, make it look decent, okay? On the left is mine that I just redid, on the right's another dude who has more subscribers than me so maybe don't listen to what I'm about to say. It is very easy to make your channel look good and give it some professionalism. Um, I'm going to show you where I would recommend. See that part up there that says Tarver Academy? It's got the little clicker and it says uh, helping the world's best students and teachers, or helping the world's best students learn and have fun. I should know my own tagline. That right there, that's my channel art. It's called YouTube Channel Art. That is where you would go and put something that tells about your channel. It's the name of your channel and either your theme or how you add people value or your mission statement or when you upload videos. Every Sunday, new video, you put that in your channel art. Um, everything else, you want to create playlists, you want to have a YouTube trailer. Those are all things I have videos on we can talk about later. Important thing to know when you're uploading a video. When you upload a video, it asks you three things. Well, four technically was scheduled. Unlisted, that means that they that link to that video is the only way somebody can see it. So you can share that link to that video with your class and they'll see it, but people can't just find it on the internet. Public, 
people can just find it on the internet. Anybody can see it and search for it. Private means nobody can see it. But then also you have scheduled, which means that you can choose when that video goes out. So I can upload it and say, I don't want it to come out till Wednesday morning at nine. Um, also, you can do a premiere. That's what this is right now. This is a premiere. I shot this, edited it, uploaded it, and scheduled it to come out because that way I can talk to you guys in the comments while I'm presenting all this. Great way to do a virtual class too because it's like you have a co-teacher. You can teach your lesson while it's happening. Your students are in the comments and you're dropping in links, advice, answering questions. It's what I've been doing this whole time. Cover art and thumbnails. I, I used to use Adobe Spark and that was what I recommended. I love Canva now. Canva is awesome. You can create templates, designs. If you want to create a YouTube thumbnail, you just type in YouTube thumbnail. Boom. Guess what? It brings up example YouTube thumbnails. You can take one, make a copy, change the text, the photos, good to go. YouTube cover art. You can do this for Instagram stories. You can do it for Facebook covers, Facebook group covers, book covers. Canva is incredible and it's free and actually you can apply to get it free for teachers to get the pro version So you should definitely apply for it. Canva is awesome. I recommend it um, That's for your cover art and your thumbnails in screen Those are the things that pop up at the end of the video. It's like a circle things you can click on actually on mobile It was created for mobile annotations used to be these things that popped in throughout the video But they got rid of that and then there's cards cards are like the little there's like a little white thing that pops up in the upper right hand corner and it comes across, it's like you can click on it and go out. So I'm not gonna do that, but if I wanted to, I could be like, hey, I made a video on how to shoot with your iPhone, check the card, and then when it pops in, you can click it, and you can either watch it immediately, or you can click, and when you click that, it'll say, you wanna watch this as soon as the video's over? You say, yes, that's actually what I should start doing. I don't do it because well, then I gotta go find where I said that, and I always forget. So recommendations. Next one, I wanna recommend to you some YouTubers that I like, but also I have a place where I would love to hear your recommendations. So, here we go, and that was a video I made, it was a tutoring rap, it was great. Um, here we go, social studies. Hip Hughes, he is great, he's a uh, guy who's a teacher who started making history videos on YouTube, does an awesome job. Tom Ritchie, who's actually been on my podcast a couple times, love Tom Ritchie, awesome dude, meme extraordinaire, check him out. Um, Hip, Hip Hughes and Tom Ritchie, are both like teachers that are teaching history. So you know they're gonna come at it with a teacher's uh, sensor. Like they're gonna filter through in their brain, like this is appropriate, this is not appropriate. And they're really good at trying to be unbiased, even though like, I'm, and again, Tom and Hip, I don't know Hip Hughes very well, but um, you guys, if I'm, if I'm overreaching or saying this incorrectly, you can tell me and I'll apologize later. Uh, I think Tom leans more probably Republican just a little bit and Hip Hughes leans a little bit more Democrat, but that's a really cool dynamic because sometimes they'll do videos together where they debate and talk about different sides, but they're both really good at presenting the information in an unbiased way. So you can follow either of them. It's not going to go wrong. Uh, Vox, they do some really good pieces, but then they also lean a little bit left. So I don't know. Keep that in mind. They've got some pieces that are better. It's more historical when they go and break down history. But then also there's some of their editorial pieces or their opinion pieces. Um, just stay away from those if you don't want that in your class. But it's also a good topic if you want your students to like be able to look at bias and call it out and stuff and recognize it, you know, whether they agree with it or not. And then Crash Course. Crash Course makes some of the best educational videos on the planet. Um, they, they're just really good. Like I said, they're the entertainer. They're going to put in so many elements. They're scripted. They've got a whole team that does research. It's not just like me creating the presentation for like three hours and then filming and then editing and then uploading it. They've got a team of people that help do this and they're very good at it. Very good at it. So I definitely recommend uh, checking them out. The only thing I will tell you if you're put, giving this to your students or your class, watch the video first. Every now and then they'll drop like a level one curse word in there. So just be be careful if that's something that you don't want to post in there for your students, but the material is so good. Um, we had a young lady at a school I worked at, and she made a really good grade on one of her AP exams, and she got a five. And we were just like, wow, let's we talk to her the year after when she came back, and we were like, what did you do? What do you attribute that to? And she said, and I quote, 90% of what I used for this test, I learned in the three weeks leading up to the test from Crash Course History. So check it out. It's a great resource to teach your students to engage them. I mean, it's like watching little shows. Um, here's some science channels. Vsauce does a good job, has a good channel. Tyler DeWitt. I've actually met Tyler, talked to him at uh, South by Southwest. Super cool dude, super nice. I really like him and I would highly, highly recommend him uh, as a source. Um, Paul Anderson does Bozeman uh, Science. Uh, he does some good videos. And then Crash Course does science videos as well. Crash Course, like I said, they're great. 
English. Um, I have no idea if these are good because, as you can tell, I speak English phenomenally. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but seriously, these are some English channels that other people have recommended. If you recommend an English channel or yourself that, and you do English, let me know on there. I've got like four English videos on there, like the difference between there, there, and there, your, your, and your. Just stuff in English that got on my nerves that I want to teach about. So I've got a few. I'd love to make some more in the future. Unless you're watching this in the future, then hopefully I've already made them. Math. Uh, Khan Academy. Videos are bleh, but the website's really good. It's very adaptive. So I, I like the website. But then again, you give him, Bill Gates gives me $2 million. I'm going to make a great website too. Um, Patrick JMT, he's got a credible amount of resources, ton of really good YouTube. He's got over like a million subs, and I've met him. He's a super nice dude too. Like I like people I've met in real life, even though I'm promoting YouTube people. I've met them in real life, a lot of them, and they're just nice people. But then again, aren't all teachers nice people? Uh, yay math. I talked to this dude, and he got he's OG um, math YouTuber from back in the day, like me, who like would upload full lessons. And his channel took off. He's got over like 200,000 subs. You should sub to him too. Great dude, smart guy, entrepreneur. Um, he's just really good, and he's a good person from the times I've talked to him, and I highly recommend Yay Math. And then, what is this? Sir Tyler Tarver. Oh, goodness, youtube.com slash Sir Tyler Tarver. Goodness gracious, what is that? What in the world? How did we get here? Oh, no. If you want to subscribe, it's right below. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. Um, that's me. My channel's called Tarver Academy. I've got math videos, but I've also got a lot of Google tutorials, teaching videos, training videos, YouTube videos. I try to be entertaining and or educating in everything that I do. And so if you like that and it resonates with you, subscribe. If not, totally cool. I appreciate your listening to me now. Um, here's some early education stuff. Some of it I've seen. Some of it was um, recommended to me. PBS Kids does a really good job. They've got a lot of resources. National Geographic Kids got some really cool stuff. I love Storybots. Storybots was a YouTube show, and then it actually got picked up on Netflix as a Netflix show. So it's on both of those, and they've got some really good resources. My son loved watching it when he was younger. Word World, I have no idea what that is. Somebody recommended it to me. However, in this presentation, if you click Add Channel here, right here, you can go to a Google Sheet that you have access to edit, and I want you to add any channels that you think would add people value or help people out. Put the link and what it is. I would love to help create essentially a huge list of stuff that people like. Okay? Cool, cool? Cool, cool, cool? Next slide. We're not doing a giveaway because this is not one of my live presentations. Lastly, we are here, we are here. Don't click off because I wanna get you a certificate for completing this hour and a half training. Um, contact me. I have a website at tarveracademy.com. It's got a, a link to a bunch of my resources, stuff like that. If you wanna go there, great. Also, check me out. I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on, uh, well, I'm on pretty much everything. LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm everywhere. I'm Tyler Tarver, at Tyler Tarver. I'm the dude that looks like this, okay? So I'd love to connect with you there. I follow back everybody that I see on there that follows me that looks like they're you know there for a reason. They're not like a bot or something. Um, if you want a full lesson plan with videos, um, personal applications, stuff you can use in your classroom as like actual, re like this could be a full lesson plan. It's like an eight day lesson plan. Your students would probably enjoy it. It's an intro to YouTube lesson plan and I've tailored it around being a teacher um, like how would a teacher present this in a class to be entertaining, but also students can learn and build. You can do it, your staff can do it, or your students can do it. It's tarveracademy.com slash blog slash YouTube. It was a post I made about that. It's also under uh, tarveracademy.com slash resources. Um, if you want more help on anything Google or YouTube related, I've got it at tarveracademy.com slash Google. And this bottom link is the one to get you a certificate for this hour and a half training. It is called bit.ly slash post -tarver. I've got the link in the bio as well. Um, I do want to show you some resources to more PD that I have. If you need more PD this summer because, you know, you can't do that in person or if you just would rather do it online, I feel like most of my stuff I try to keep engaging, but also my main thing is I want it to be applicable to you. And so if you go to tarveracademy.com, click on resources. I've got links to PDs. I've got links to full lesson plans. Here's the YouTube intro to YouTube lesson plan. I've got a digital citizenship lesson plan that you can use. It's got videos. I'm going through. I'm using Google's curriculum. I made videos, given personal experience and applications. I just want to help you out in your class to be the best teacher you can be, to help your students be the best students they can be. And that's my goal. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you subscribed, thank you so much. Um, if you didn't, it's totally cool. You do you. And I appreciate you guys. If you could, do me a favor and never stop learning. See you guys later.